All right, so going into Avengers Endgame, we got a lot of the Avengers dealing with survivor's guilt because half of the universe's population got wiped out. So there's a bunch of characters who are going to be struggling with survivor's guilt, and it's something that a lot of us struggle with as well. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at the kind of mindset and mentality that Captain America is going into, into Avengers Endgame, and see what all of us can learn from it. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and recently what I've been doing is I've been talking about Avengers Endgame and trying to see what lessons we can learn to improve our mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. All right, so yeah, Avengers Endgame. With recent trailers coming out for Endgame, we see that Captain America is in some kind of support group. There's a bunch of theories going on, whether it's like a veteran support group or it's like a support group for the survivors after Thanos you know, wiped out half the you know population. But anyways, he's in there. And to kind of get into the mindset of Captain America, He's been dealing with survivor's guilt for a long, long, long time. So if we go all the way back to the first Avenger and him getting frozen, and then you know he wakes up in modern times, there's some survivor's guilt there because everybody he knew passed away and he's the only one left. Well, there's also, there's some people who are left alive, but they're super old, all right? So he's already dealt with this before. And this is something that veterans in general, just in real life, are gonna deal with as well, just going off to war and things like that. But when it comes to Avengers Endgame, now he's dealing with it all over again. Especially when the circumstances are Thanos just snapping his fingers, half the population disappears, and there was no telling who we were gonna lose, right? Like, I remember seeing <laughs> Infinity War and having to like, process this with my son because we're like, oh my God, you're like, like Spider-Man, like that, ah, right? But anyways, you get what I mean, so. Start. I don't feel so good. All of them are kind of dealing with this, but Captain America has been dealing with it and it looks like he's trying to get help for it. So in the trailer, you see how Captain America, he says, you know, some people are just moving on, but you know, not us, right? Some people move on. Us. And, and I think that's really powerful. And we see that just because, you know, obviously Captain America is one of the, you know, leaders of the Avengers. And he kind of has this, this fortitude to keep moving forward, right? And I think that there's a lot that we can learn from this just in our actual lives as well. So hopefully in Avengers Endgame, you know, they find some solutions and, you know, I got, I got faith in, in the Avengers. But how does this relate to real life? So... I'm gonna talk about a few different subjects, but I'll start with what I have the most personal experience in, which is drug and alcohol addiction recovery. So I remember just losing people to this disease. Like I did a live stream the other day and I shared my entire story and you know, losing um, my ex-girlfriend who was also one of my best friends to this disease, right? And one of the things that kept me messed up for a long time is like, why me? Like if you look at the statistics of how many people are dying from drug addiction, from alcoholism, not just overdoses, but the you know health issues that come along with it, um, the accidents that happen, like when you're drunk driving or when you're high and you're doing stupid stuff. Like something that I personally struggled with for a long time was like, why me? Why me? Why did I get so lucky to be the one that survived this, right? And I, I ended up working in a treatment center for a little over three years. And in that three years, I had over 70 people pass away, not only from relapsing and overdosing, but also, you know, things like suicides, health issues, things like that. And it was really rough on me. And I know a lot of the clients that I, I worked with too, a lot of them dealt with survivor's guilt as well, because especially in treatment, a lot of them grow these bonds together. So typically if somebody would pass away, I'd get a message from like 20 people. So. There's a couple ways to deal with this. If any of you are in recovery and you're you're dealing with this as well, like I found a couple strategies for me that helped me out, which might be able to help you as well. So one of the things is 
was being there for other people, right? So when, when somebody would pass away, I was able to be there for the other clients or the other alumni who knew this person. I was able to talk to them and walk them through it, especially because I'm somebody who's dealt with this so, so, so many times. Like never in a million years did I think I was going to experience so much death in my life. But I try to look at it and say, okay, how can I turn this into something that benefits others, right? And I truly believe that any pain that we've gone through, our experience, can benefit somebody else when they go through it, all right? But the other way I kind of deal with that is I live a life with purpose today. So one of the things that not only keeps me, you know, clean and sober, and it's been working for over six years, like it's just one of the many things, is I kind of dedicate what I'm doing to the people we've lost and didn't have that opportunity. So, you know, like a lot of a lot of people who who died from this thing, they're they, you know, they didn't plan on it, right? Some of them just, you know, they wanted to die. Some of them it was accidental overdose, you know, whatever it was. But I try to honor their memory by not only staying sober, but you know, living a really full life. And that that to me is how I honor their memory. And just my opinion on dealing with grief and loss, I think one of the biggest struggles that a lot of us deal with, you know, based on, you know, my experience is what's the best way to honor somebody's memory, you know? I think that's what it is. So, you know, every day, or if I'm gonna make this decision or that decision, or like, oh, well, I'm gonna quit YouTube or whatever it is. And it's like, I, I think about that. I think the people I've lost, I'm like, no, you know, I, I have a purpose to spread this message and try to help people, not just when it comes to addiction recovery, but just anybody who's struggling in life. And that's one of the things that keeps me moving forward. So now when it comes back to survivor's guilt as well, like not only can we look at, you know, Captain America and everything like that, like real quick, like let's go back to um, Black Panther. At the end of Black Panther, um, T'Challa and, you know, um, just the members of Wakanda, they started to do this kind of outreach thing. You know what I mean? And when I look at that, I think that's a way to handle survivor's guilt in a different way too. You see a lot of survivor's guilt with people who came from a bad upbringing or a bad neighborhood or a bad situation and then they succeed, right? There's that kind of survivor's guilt because other people are still in that position. So what T'Challa did as well as Wakanda, they started giving back and doing outreach. We see this in everyday life as well. For example, we just lost the rapper Nipsey Hussle and he was somebody who was giving back to that community that he came from, which is very admirable. So like when I see people, and this is just personal opinion, when I see people who are succeeding and they talk about like their survivor's guilt because they know people from back in the day who are struggling and everything like that, I'm not saying we can solve all their problems, but we can work towards, you know, advocacy, starting charities, you know, going back and doing events or whatever it is to not only help out that community that we came from, but to also inspire people. Like part of my my own recovery and even part of just doing this YouTube channel is that's my way of giving back. Like not only do I try to help people with addiction, but also their depression, their anxiety. You know, I had a rough childhood and all those things. So I try to give back. Now that I've come out on the other side of these, that thing, I try to give back. And the other great benefit of this is mentorship, right? Mentorship is somebody who's already been through something and they kind of just give you suggestions like, yo, here's what I did if you want to walk this path, right? And I think that's that's something that all of us can do if we came from that situation. And you don't have to be like, you know, a, a famous rapper like Nipsey Hussle. You don't got to be LeBron James. You don't got to be a, a YouTuber or whatever it is. Like, just go volunteer in your old neighborhoods or whatever. Like if you've succeeded, what can you give back to the next generation or other people in that community to teach them how to get to that place too? You know what I mean? So there's a lot of people who struggle with survivor's guilt in different ways. But like when I look at the Avengers going into Endgame, like part of it is never giving up. And with all the topics that we're kind of talking about in this this uh, video, like, I think that's important to never give up. Like, for example, if I go back to addiction, everything like that, like, it's, it would have been easy for me many, many, many times. Like, there were times working at that drug and alcohol treatment center where I would get calls, like, two or three people in a week would pass away. And those were the most difficult times where I just wanted to give up. I just want to give up, just like, what am I doing? Like, And I would sit in that self-pity, and I think that's a struggle that some of the Avengers have. Like, we see there's a lapse in time. I, uh, we don't know how long it is, but I, I, I feel like some of them have been sitting in self-pity for a while. And then it gets to a point, it's like, no, we got to do something. We got to at least try. And that's the way I see just 
you know, mental health as a whole. Like I would lose, you know, purpose and I'd be throwing this away and this thing that I've done if I just gave up, gave up because of overdose rates, because of suicide rates, because of the mental health issues. Like, oh, well, healthcare isn't that great for mental health, so I guess I'll just give up. Like, I choose to not to not live like that. I choose to keep fighting and keep working towards it and all of that and decrease the stigma, to increase awareness, to provide people with a little bit of hope and all of that. And, you know, when you look back at giving back to old communities or where you came from, like, if we don't give up on those communities and we keep trying, we keep pushing forward and we use um, where we are now to kind of spread that message, we can get more people involved, all right? So that's a little bit about survivor's guilt as a whole and maybe some of the mentalities of people like Captain America or Steve Rogers, whatever you like to call him, going into Avengers Endgame. If you have any experience with survivor's guilt, let me know down in the comments below. Let's have a discussion, all right? But anyways, make sure that you're subscribed and ring the notification bell because I got a more Avengers Endgame videos coming, trying to blend the upcoming video or the upcoming movie with some mental health topics, all right? And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and a huge, Huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. Thank you all so, so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.